In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps SQL lookups. So one of the things that comes up a lot with people is I keep pushing everyone to use SQL, especially Azure SQL Database as a service for their apps, is they're like, all right, now I'm over here, how do I do some of these things? So for example, you have two tables, you want to have one have a primary key, another then have a foreign key to relate two tables. We're going to cover that in this video. So that way you can have your drop downs instead of just showing ID numbers, actually show like your customer name. So should be pretty straightforward. Hopefully it's a pretty quick video also, but this will be one of those foundational blocks that let us do more in the future. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to look at Power Apps and SQL. So one of the things that I talk to my customers about a lot is that you know some of these other data sources that we're getting started with, like SharePoint and Excel, they're great for getting started and they're great for small solutions. But if you're going to build something that's going to scale over time, really what you probably want to do is get in a more robust solution. And so that's either Azure SQL Database as a service or CDS, the common data service. I haven't done any videos on CDS yet, but I should have that on my list. I should do that soon. So today, though, I want to focus on Azure SQL Database as a service. And what I want to do here is I want to talk about relating tables. So if you've got one table, in our example, we're going to have a uh, customer's table, and then we're also going to have a project's table. And we want to be able to relate those two so we're storing the information or the keys between the two instead of kind of duplicating any information. So that's what we're going to cover here. And this will become one of those foundational blocks to get us moving forward. Now, if you're trying to do something like this, but you want to do it on SharePoint, I get that a lot also. So that video is already made. So if you look down below, you'll see that one. Um, but for this one today, we're going to concentrate on SQL, even though these techniques can be used elsewhere. And I think we'll just jump over here, we'll get started. And so maybe the first thing that we'll do over here on my desktop is we'll take a look at SQL. So my SQL database, I have a projects uh, table. And if you're like, whoa, how do I get started with SQL? There's a separate video for that down below also. I'm assuming you've kind of got a SQL database going though. So here you can see I've got a projects table and I've got a couple columns, right? An ID, that's my primary key a customer ID, and so that's my foreign key. So that's what's going to connect us to the customer table. And then the project name, status, start date, end date, things we don't care about, right? Really what we care about is this customer ID. So if we look over in my customers table, you can see that I have customer one and customer two. And so that is the customer name is dogs or cats, and it's Chewy, my dog, or Ferguson, the cat from um, New Girl, if you're a New Girls fan. If not, that's no big deal. Anyway, so what we want to do is over here in our uh, projects, we're just going to store customer ID one, and then we'll just worry about the relationship later, pulling forward that that goes to the customer name dogs. Got it? Cool. So switch over to Power Apps and look at how we would do that. Okay, so over here in Power Apps, what I want to do is I'm going to go to Apps. I'm just going to say Create an App. And after a few seconds, this is going to load up. And so just to make this go a lot faster for us, we're going to start with our data and we're going to do it from our SQL. So I have a SQL data connection already to my test master. So we're going to click on that. And it's going to show me all the different tables available. And so we're going to use, uh, we need the projects table and the customers. We can only choose one. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose projects because I want that to be my main structure. And we're going to let Power Apps just go ahead and we'll connect here. But we're going to let Power Apps go ahead and build us a working app from this, right? One of the powers of Power App. Now, if I was doing a real solution, I probably wouldn't do this, but this fast forwards us and gets us going. Now, if you do this with your SQL data and you don't see a plus up here, that means that your database didn't have a primary key. So Power App says I can only display the data. So it's not let you add or edit. So make sure you see this. And once again, there's a video below if you're like, whoa, I need help setting up that database. But so here you can see they've made us an app, right? We'll just hit play. And so this is all the projects. And so if we click on get rid of cats, you'll see that right now it's saying, all right, you know, here's your data and customer ID is one. So database wise, very structurally sound, very much exactly what I want. User experience, very bad. They have no idea who customer ID one is. So we're going to fix that in this video. So let's exit out of this. And so we'll start by fixing the view and then we'll go and look at separately how we fix the edit experience. So here we go on the view. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this data card. And to change this data card, we're going to click on the data card. We're going to go over here to advanced. And we're going to say we want to unlock to change its properties. All right. 
So now this data card is editable. And so if we click on it, we can see, we're gonna kind of pull this up here on the left. We can see that this is just a normal label, but the text right now is pulling parent.default. So it's pulling in the uh, ID for customer ID based on this record. Not what we want. What we wanna do, I'm gonna say, hey, instead of that, I want you to do a lookup. And I want you to do a lookup, oh, our database isn't here, our table's not here yet, right? So we gotta add that for next. So we'll say view, data sources. Yep, so there's a project, so we're gonna add another data source. I'm gonna scroll down through my list. I'm gonna say, all right, I want test master again. And so this time we're gonna choose the customer's table. And this time I could do a multi-select if I wanted to because I'm not building the app. So if you need to pull in a bunch of databases or a bunch of tables, I keep messing up my words, a bunch of tables, then this is where you would do it. We just need this one. So we're gonna say connect. Okay, so now that it's connected, now we'll go back over here to our label. All right, and so there you go. So there's our lookup. And so we're gonna say we wanna look up this time We'll start typing in the word customers. There it is. So we're gonna look up from the customers table. And what are we gonna look up? Well, we wanna find where the ID, right? That's the ID from the customers table equals the customer ID from this particular record we're on. So that's how we're correlating the two. So we'll do a comma. And when we find that, what do we wanna return? We don't wanna return uh, customer ID, we want to return the customer name, right? We want to pull the name value back from that table. So then we'll close our parentheses. And if I did this correctly, which is always optional, look at that. I'm going to hit play, make it easier to read. So now it shows dogs, right? So before it showed a one, now it shows dogs, right? And if we switch over to the database view, then what we'll see over here is exactly what we expected is that customers Number one is dogs. Boom. Switch back. Okay. So that's working like we would need, right? And if we go, actually, let's go back here. We'll say back. And let's click on uh, make dogs take more baths. If we click on that, the customer ID on that is the cats, right? So it's customer ID two. It looked it up. It found cats. So we've created that relational uh, lookup that we wanted between this uh, data from a view perspective. So now let's go and make it so that we're editing a project, right? If I go in and get rid of cats and I say edit, it's going to show me the one again. And once again, while you and I know one means dogs, our end users do not. So we gotta fix this one for them too. And this one's a little trickier. So let's X out of that. Okay, so we're gonna kind of start at the same spot. We'll pull this up so it's easier to see. We're going to unlock this data card. And so this time, though, we're going to have to get rid of this entire thing. So we're going to delete the label, right? Because this should be a choice. So we're going to delete that out. We're going to say, all right, let's do an insert here. Now, put your icon, make sure you're back in this customer ID data card. All right, so do an insert. And then we're going to do a control. And we're going to do a drop down. And then I'm going to grab this card. It drives me bonkers. It's not big enough. Make it a little bigger. I'll click on this guy. Kind of drag him down a little bit, you know. And as always, you can sit there and fiddle with the sizes forever. I'm not going to make you suffer through me doing it. But for our drop down now, you can see the items is drop down sample. Well, that's not what we want. So what we might want, probably not, but we're going to start there, is we probably want something like from customers, right? We want customers dot uh, customer name. So we could try and do that for the items. Um, but that's not going to work very well, right? Because that's going to just show us all of the customer uh, names. And when we're editing here, is that what we really want? Well, let's see. So we'll go back here. we we'll go customer name. And we'll hold down the Alt key, right? Use that little trick. And so I get the drop. Oh, hold down the Alt key some more. So I get the drop down dogs and cats. Okay. So that's showing us the right items. But... <laughs> I'll just cut to the chase. There's a little bit of a trick here. So when I would go to return this, yeah, if we go to the updates, right? So the data card, that's how, what, that's controls what gets written back when you submit this form, right? So if we go there and we say, all right, update. Well, right now it's trying to submit something that's not there. So we know it can't do that. So we're like, all right, well, when they choose that, we want to use drop down one. Yep, he highlighted greens, that's good. And we want to do his selected 
And then when you go to do this, it says, what well, do you want to put in the selected value or the customer name? Well, neither, right? We don't, we want, we need to write back either the one or the two. So this is where it gets a little trickier for us, right? Because we want to write back the ID. And we know that because if we go back to our database again, you know, ID is the number, right? Okay. So what we have to do is you have to go back to your drop down. And for the items, it is not going to be this. So get rid of that. We're going to use the show columns function because we need to return more than just one column. So we're going to say, hey, show me the columns from customers. And so what column do you want to display? That's the first one you'll list. So we want to display customer name, right? Dogs or cats. So that'll be first. Got it. Then we're going to do a comma and say we also want to return ID. So ID is not going to be shown here, right? It still just shows us, hold on the alt key, still just shows us dogs or cats. But if we go back over to our data card update, look at that. It's now happy with ID. So this is how we're going to write back the one or the two. And it's thanks to the show columns, which pulls in all the pieces, right? That's the thing that everyone struggles with. They're like, how do I get this back? And so <laughs> the whole video was made to show you that 30 seconds. Mm, what do you do? <laughs> we'll finish anyway. All right, so we have another red warning here. So let's fix that. So I'm going to click on it. And so the reason for that is because one of the uh, cards, the error card, it is showing, it's, uh, it's setting its Y value, right? Where it goes up and down on the page based on the data card value six, but we deleted that one. So all we have to do is change that to be the drop down one, right? The name that we gave it. And what you'll see in just one second, drop down right that. Right, so you see it kind of highlighted here. It's a little difficult to see, but now the error text is just saying, all right, I go the next pixel below um, that drop down. So that's how you're, it's doing the dynamic, you know, location on the screen. So don't overthink it. Just go and fix them or, uh, you know, yeah, go fix them. That's the right thing to do. All right, so let's try this out now. So we'll say our play button. Let's go back to here, back to here. Okay, so get rid of cats. All right, so that shows dogs like it should. Now if we click edit, wait, it shows dogs, but is that right? I don't think it is. Let's go over here and say make dogs takes more baths. All right, so this should show cats. It does, good. Let's say edit. Ooh, this shows dogs. Why? Glad you asked. The reasons, because we didn't make all the changes over here. So click back on this guy. So we fixed his items. What didn't we fix? His default. His default right now is one, which means mm, basically nothing because it's not actually a thing. So what we need to set the default to be is to do a lookup, All right? So we're going to say we want to do a lookup from customers. And what's our condition? We want to do it where ID equals customer ID. And then what column do we want to return? we need to return the customer name. Okay. All right. So go look up from our customer's table where ID on the table equals the customer ID and then return the customer name. So that's how we're going to show the correct value here. So then now we can see that the customer or the project make dogs take more baths is owned by the cats like we'd expect. I would also probably fix why we're in here. Let's change this parent this display name to be customer name like it should be. Oh, but let's put a, some parentheses or some quotes around it. So there you go. Okay, so that looks a little nicer. So now let's go back over here. So that looks right. That looks right. Let's go. So get rid of the cats. That's the dogs. And if you notice that slight little hesitation, it's because I'm using a really small database because I'm poor and I can't afford expensive databases. But if you've got a faster database, you probably wouldn't see that. So then we'll say edit here. All right, that looks like dogs. So that's good. And if we change this, we say, all right, get rid of cats is going to be, we're going to change that to be cats. Let's make sure this works. So we'll say check. All right. Oh, that's cats. That looks good. So we'll go back here. We'll say get rid of cats. We'll refresh our data just so we feel real good that we're looking at fresh data. So that says cats like it should. And then we'll say edit again. And it takes us to cats. We'll make that fix dogs before Chewy gets mad at me. So we'll say submit that item again. 
But so there you go. So that is connected up. Uh, so we can reviewing a friendly name. We're editing by choosing a friendly name, but writing back the ID, which is what we were after. The last little piece of this I want to cover for just one second is what about if they come in and do a new item? Well, let's just try it out. So if we go back here, all right, so from the home, if we hit the plus, so here you can see, right, because this default app, the edit and new is the same form, so it went ahead and did that. Now you will notice that right now mine defaults to dogs. And so what it really is defaulting to, just so we're on the same page, is it's defaulting to the top thing in the list. So the first customer listed is dogs, and that's why it's defaulting to that. What I would prefer you do is maybe come over here, add another customer, right? So add a customer where the customer name is blank or not selected or unknown or, you know, something like that, right? Something, uh, a, def a true default value. And you can't reorder your database and make it move up. So what I would do is then I would come in here and I'd say, all right, your default is no longer this, but your default would be something like this. It'd be like if, um, let's see, what's the name of our form? It's edit form one. So if edit form one dot mode, equals form mode dot edit, then what? When it equals that, I want to run this. That'll be my default value, right? The thing we just proved that worked. If it's not, then what I would do is I would say look up, oh, I don't want to spell look up. I'd say well, look up from customers. And so what's our default value? Well, we don't have a default one, so let's go create one. So ready to be brave, we're going to say edit the top 200 rows. We'll put in one, we'll just call this blank 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and blank here as well. Or you know what, I think we'll just leave it completely blank like that. I think that should work. I don't know, cross your fingers, I am, have not tried this. I did not test this portion ahead of time. But so then what we'd say is, all right, well, then I want that where ID... And so we know that that was ID three, right? I guess I should have checked that. Yep, so that made it ID three. We'll close this to make sure everything got saved. We'll refresh this guy, yes. Okay, so ID three. Uh, look up ID three, customer name, like so. And then I think we just need one more parenthesis at the end. Boom, okay. So we hit play, we'll X out of this. We'll say, give me a new one. So the reason this isn't working, <laughs> it's kind of being mean, is I need to um, refresh the data here, right? So, cause you notice that if we hit Alt, the drop down isn't showing me. So let's grab this. And this is the type of thing that I end up having to do when I'm writing things on the fly. This is not a button I would leave here for all the time. But when you do that, I would say refresh customers like so, we'll say play, we'll click the button, see the little ants marching across the screen, boom, the refresh happened, and then there's our blank customer name. Okay, and hopefully that wraps this video up, right? So now we've kind of looked at how to establish those relationships, right? You've got your SQL structure underneath, and we've just looked at how to make the lookups inside of Power Apps connect and write back the ID numbers like you want instead of the actual name values and then kind of how to you know mess around with that. So once again, this is the foundational video. We're going to be doing a lot more with SQL. I have this grandiose app that I've kind of written using SQL as the back end that we're going to do a bunch of these little pieces, get ourselves all ready, and then tackle that big app here soon. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and hit me up through Power Apps 911. You can tweet me at Shane's Cows or you can leave me comments below, right? I get hundreds of those a week and really enjoy uh, interacting with them, right? That's where this video came from. Somebody asked a question, I was in the mood to make a video, so I said, all right, I'm gonna do that now. But what do you do? Anyway, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you wanna work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and you know enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.